Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education meeting for July 10th. I need a motion to go into closed session. Pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, I move for the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County to meet in closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction to consider matters that relate to negotiations, to discuss the budget strategy and perform an administrative function, and to consult with counsel regarding an appeal and to receive legal advice. Do I have a second? Second. A motion and a second to go into closed session. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Move into closed session. Be back at 6 p.m. Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Education July 10th meeting. I'd like to everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. And after that, we'll stand for a moment of silence for tr our troops and our um, first responders. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, I need a motion to approve the minutes from June. I don't have a date here, I'm sorry. June oh, 5th. June 5th and June 19th. So moved. Open and closed session. So moved. A second? Second. Okay, all in favor, Mrs. Wright? Call the roll. Board members, please affirm when I call your name. Kathy Kelly? Uh, yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Lissette? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I have four of your affirmative. These minutes are approved. Motion carried. Okay. Next item is the board involvement. Um, I'll start with myself. Um, I've been enjoying my summer, so we haven't <laughs> had too many activities to do. Um, and uh, I can pass it on. Anyone else? We've earned this, so Mr. Mr. Yes, Smith. I met with uh, Rob Marsh, Jack Wilson, our county commissioner, and Linda Friday about two or three weeks ago about some programs they're promoting at Chesapeake College to the businesses to get certificates. I think Dr. Kane's well aware of this. Um, and I talked to them about some things that are pretty interesting, some different things they're doing and like to proceed and understand devils in the detail, how you get things done and stuff. But they're going to have something in the end of, middle of end of September at Chesapeake College, a workshop. And I was wondering if we could have them do a 15 minute presentation to us maybe in August. We could ask them a couple questions because it is Queen Anne's County Chambers and bring them in and ask, they could do a little presentation. They updated me on some stuff, which I found very interesting. Uh, and maybe they could get the whole board and the public would also see that for the people that are interested in it. Would that be possible? Sure. I think so. We, we, uh, we're, we met briefly with the commissioners yesterday okay. um, on a monthly meeting that mm -hmm. we have. And they brought this up and I think it's September 25th. Correct. At Chesapeake College. Chesapeake right. College in the evening. Mm -hmm. So that seems like a great thing because the importance is for us to hear it, what it's about, mm -hmm. and also the public to hear right. because it's in, they're in, all invited, as I understand. They're all invited, and, and it's, it's going to be all the counties with Chesapeake College, and they're kind of like the hub, which is excellent for us because we're closer, just thinking of transportation issues and stuff. But uh, they do some certifications that, you know, it's you need your college, you need your uh, high school, you need your certain people need college but this gives them out when they get out they've got another certificate of something they can actually you know have credential i know we do some of it now right but this could take us to the next level right and so there's some work so we are already working with chesapeake college and there's some work and I've, I've got my cni family uh here today as well thank you for being here but there's some work that has to be done for the programs that we like to work with them on mm -hmm. to get them certified and it's not just a uh, queen anne's county it's a maryland so talbot can't 
Queen Anne's doesn't have access for our students because it is not certified. So they can't earn their high school credit and that kind of thing for that program. But they know that, and we're working with them on that. They told me Talbot did have some accreditation, and they've already done some of it. But not for the programs that we don't have. Okay, gotcha. So it's the same boat. So there, we're talking about uh, electrical, we're talking about plumbing, HVAC, those kinds of programs. It's just not ready for high school students um, at at uh, Chesapeake College, but we're working with them. And I think it would be good if we did go ahead and invite um, them to come forward as long as they're ready. And, um, and we'll send out flyers to invite our community for the September 25th event. Um, and I've already spoken with Mr. Tolley actually today uh, to make sure that all of his colleagues get it and we're getting the word out. That's so, an excellent idea. We'll, we'll get it on the schedule. So it would be the August meeting, August. our August regular school board, first right. Wednesday, okay. Correct. Um, I can make contact with Miss Fabi. Did you meet with her? Linda Friday. Linda Friday. Uh -huh. Okay. She'd probably be the contact. So person. not not economic development. You're talking about chamber. chamber. Okay. Yeah. She's with the chamber, and I met. And it was uh, the meeting. I they invited me to with Jack Wilson and uh, Rob Marsh, which I think's uh, marine mm -hmm. service. Marine technology. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, there was more than just that. But it's. It was interesting, and I think it's something we should look into because I think our tech trades and some of those other things would be very helpful. And with Chesapeake College, if they're willing to do some of this, it could be very interesting. I think there's some other stuff they've worked with in the past, but, you know, it would help our... We are wide open for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you'll get in touch with Linda Certainly will, yep, so August. that we can invite her um, to the August meeting. Okay, thank we'll you. definitely yep. plan on it for mm -hmm. August then. Okay. No, Linda Friday sits on the gov um, Governor Hogan's commission for CTE. She, yes, and there, there are lots of connections. I do understand awesome. that. Awesome. Mm -hmm. No, it's great that it's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Dr. Kane? Absolutely. So same thing. Um, it's been a, a time of um, reflection, and actually we are gearing up. So we are on a countdown to the start of the school year, even though we just got finished with one. So we, we had a few retirements. Uh, we had Dave Brown's retirement. We had Mr. Dunn's retirement. We had Marshall uh, Ryan's retirement. Those were all great. We did the elementary uh, habitat for uh, ed environmental education habitat at uh, Graysonville Elementary School. That was absolutely fabulous. Lots of partners there in the environmental education world. All of the school, all of the students were involved with student-led activities for the rest of the students. It was absolutely wonderful. Uh, students from the Grace project did a lot of the teaching and the running of those programs so it was great we also had through my superintendent's environmental education collaborative a uh, green sale so we sailed out on the HM Krentz skipjack out of uh, Graysonville mr. page joined me as long as well as mr. Tolly and mr. Uh, Paluski um, Ms. Wright joined us as well, and uh, we joined a lot of our environmental ed um, partners and Caroline County Schools, they were there as well. We had Mr. Eric Johnson from Emergency Services to come over and meet with Mr. Pender and I. We talked about our plans for the Haunted Trap House, which is scheduled for October uh, in our middle schools. Actually, it's going to be at Kennard. Um, Heritage Building. Right, Kennard um, Elementary School. So we're doing some planning for that as well that's coming up. What is it called? It's, the, it's with the opioid awareness um, programs, and it's actually called the Haunted Trap House, and it used to be called something else, crack ha Haunted Crack House, but they have uh, made some changes, and it's called the Haunted Trap House. So that's scheduled for October. And then, of course, here at the end of June, we had a central office sort of end of the year cookout for all our employees, which was a great gathering. Uh, Mr. Pender and Mr. Fister were on the grill, and everything was wonderful, and uh, we're grateful for that. So that's about it for now. Okay. And Mr. Pulisky's not here. Citizen participation is next. Do we have any, Jackie? Anyone on the list? I'm sorry. Do we any have anybody list? on the list? Anyone on the list? There's no one? The Citizen participation. No, there's, a, there's, nobody, there's nobody signed up. Did they? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, we do? Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Yep. This is for the Board of Education meetings uh, public comment. We ask all speakers to keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster, include their telephone uh, number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. 
Um, questions or statements to the board should relate to a recent agenda item or an agenda item that is expected to appear in the future or a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. Please do not discuss items related to negotiations. These items are to be discussed at the bargaining table. This is not the proper venue to address specific student or employee personnel matters, especially those matters on legal appeal to the board. Comments about the actions or statements of individual staff, mem staff members are not appropriate for public comments and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or processed through the available channels. Citizen participation is not intended to be a question and answer session. If you have specific questions, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your questions at a later date. The board respects your desire and conveys the right to convey your message freely, but ask as a courtesy to this board and our citizens that you respect the board's request to refrain from naming citizens and name calling when you offer your critique. The first person here is Rebecca Perry. Good evening. Good evening, thank you. Um, my name's Rebecca Perry. I'm a school psychologist in the county and I just finished my fourth year, um, your fourth year here in the county. Um, this past year, I was at Queen Anne's County High School, Centerville Elementary and Anchor Points Academy. Um, I'm here to raise awareness for the range of services that school psychologists that can provide that you may or may not be familiar with, um, particularly as it, uh, one of the agenda items is the threat assessment policy. Um, we work with students, parents, and teachers. We address a range of concerns, talking about um, academic difficulties, social and emotional and behavioral problems. Um, specifically, our role is driven by special education law, looking at conducting evaluations for special education eligibility. Um, we also are involved for a number of reasons to determine strengths and weaknesses of students and figuring out why students may be struggling. Um, we consult on the policy, uh, on the development of different policies, specifically that threat assessment policy, but we also work at an individual level with students to talk about crisis plans, to problem solve a range of, of struggles that get in the way of academic success. Um, one of the things that we are concerned about is here in Queen Anne's County Public Schools, we currently have the the, the highest ratio of students to school psychologists in the state of Maryland when we're fully staffed. And when we're fully staffed, we have six school psychologists. Despite our limitations um, from that ratio, we've attempted to provide as many services as we could and to the best of our abilities. And I'm proud to say that I think our group has done a, a very nice job. Um, we are concerned about some interruptions in services being possible this fall, um, as we've had a recent resignation and we've had some difficulty recruiting um, school psychologists in the past five years. Um, and also, if you couldn't tell, I'll, I'll be out on maternity leave. So I'm worried about my, my group of colleagues who I think is an amazing group of school psychologists. Um, we really just wanna have a plan for how we're gonna best meet our students' needs come, come this fall and moving forward long-term, um, given the difficulties we, we feel we've had with recruiting and retention. Um, we really just want to partner for being able to communicate and problem solve some possible solutions. So I'm, I'm just come, came, came here tonight to start that dialogue. Um, I appreciate your attention to the matter and I'm um, open to any questions or any discussions you would like to have further. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Julie uh, Brucker. Hi, I'm Julie Brucker. I'm a school psychologist here in Queen Anne's County as well. Um, the schools I worked at this year are Centerville Mill School, Kent Island Elementary School, and Graysonville Elementary School. Um, this is my first year in the county. Um, and when we have been talking about things of retention of psychs, there were things that when I had started this position, it was a 12 month contract when I was speaking with HR directly, they said they were gonna work with me um, to go to the negotiations to try to open up the possibility of a 10 month position. Um, throughout the year, we checked in several times, you know, it was in the process, it was in the process. Um, however, then we found out it was never brought to the table. Um, so just overall, I, I would like you guys to consider discussing options with us um, as to how we can resolve this ongoing problem that we've had. I did have one question. Where did you come from? What system were you in before this? I went to, I was in Virginia last year. Okay, thank you. Now, good. just so I'm on speed, you're telling me we don't have enough and you're overworked. And then you're saying we want to go from 10 to 12. Mm -hmm. 12 to 10. This is not a question and answer session. I'm sorry. 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Amanda Bramble. Hi, uh, my name is Amanda Bramble, and I am also one of the school psychologists here in the county. Um, I work in several elementary schools, including uh, Mattapique Elementary, also in Graysonville Elementary, and Kennard Elementary. Um, I am also in here in support of my fellow psychs, um, as well as our role in this county. So if you'll allow me, I will um, read from a statement that I've prepared for you. So one of our priorities in attending tonight um, is to make sure that students, the students of Queen Anne's County Public Schools continue to be provided with the opportunities and services necessary to be successful in not just school, but life. Um, with several recent losses in our staff, we are preparing to begin the 2019-2020 school year with sig being significantly understaffed. Um, based upon our data that we've collected as a group, we have collectively com completed approximately 400 evaluations for special education services and qualifications this year. While these um, assessment procedures only represent one of the roles that we fill in this county, um, they take an incredible amount of time and care in terms of the number of meetings that we attend to work with both parents and school staff, um, as well as conduct the actual assessments with the students. Looking forward to the 2019-2020 school year, we anticipate um, starting the school year with just three and a half school psychologists. We have six that are normally allotted. Um, which would imply that each psychologist would have approximately 114 evaluations to complete in order to help the county maintain state and federal compliance. Uh, what this would mean for our other roles would mean less opportunities to be involved in proactive screening measures, um, participating in school-based teams, being able to provide consultation to both teachers and parents, being less available to respond um, in a timely manner to crisis and threat assessment needs, which I know is on your agenda for later on today. Um, despite an already demanding caseload, we have worked very diligently with our school team to ensure that we have limited interruptions to these services in the past. However, with the looming realization that we are facing further demands, we ask for assistance in problem solving how to best continue meeting the needs of our students. Um, we as a group of school psychologists invite the opportunity to open further dialogue with you on this matter. And I simply thank you for your time and for hearing us out on these concerns. Thank and you. If there are any questions. Okay. Anyone else like to speak? Thank you all very much. Okay, the next item on our list is the 2019 Educational Facilities Management Master Plan, Ms. Pollan. Good evening, members of the board and Dr. Kane. My name is Carla Pullen. I'm the facilities planner for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. I'm here this evening to ask for your approval of the 2019 Educational Facilities Master Plan. That would be for use as a working document for the next school year. And if you recall, I was here during the last meeting to discuss what the requirements of this document are and to give you a brief overview of the draft. And I'm here this evening to answer any questions that you might have. I didn't have any. Anyone have any? It's, it's, it's a great piece of work. Thank you. I mean, I know that's a lot of work and a lot of coordination with people, so. Thank you. We well definitely done. do put a lot of thought into I what know. is upcoming for our system. Yeah. Okay, so we do need approval, um, and we will we will do that. Um, I need a motion to approve the 2019 Educational Facilities Master Plan for submission to the Maryland State Department of Planning. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the 2019 Educational Facilities Master Plan. Mrs. Wright? November 16th, I want to call your name. Kathleen Kelly? Yes. Mrs. Harper? Yes. Ms. Morissette? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I have four in the affirmative. The motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to methodically go through um, several contract approval requests. First one, and I'd like the staff to give us a quick briefing on each one. First one is the Pearson High School English Corps. So as Ms. Passon comes forward, I just want to uh, make a quick statement. So 
over the past few months, we've brought you lots and lots of contracts, any contract that's over $25,000. Uh, and, and you've seen contracts that have multiple year agreements. And as we move forward, we're bringing these to you now because we don't know if you saw them in the beginning of the contract years and we're renewing. But as we move forward, we're going to bring it to you in the beginning of the contract for the approval and it'll have the total amount. But we won't bring it every year, you know, we'll bring it again when the contract is up. So as you know, most of the contracts we have, you can renew them or continue them annually. And so we won't continue to bring them annually. We'll bring it once it comes up for renewal. But as we go through our budget, if it's a one that we committed for two or three years, and that will be stated, it will in our be budget, in the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, that, but, we, but the commitment's been made, so it's already, already spent. Correct, correct. And you, you, when you approve them, you approve for a, the total dollar amount. Mm -hmm. So you'll have already made the approval. Um, but it takes a lot of time for you to do this every year. So I know I had a question earlier today about contracts that are not new contracts, but it is still within the contract period. We just wanted to make sure that you had an opportunity to lay your eyes on what we're doing. Uh, but as we continue to move forward, we won't come back year after year with the same contract We'll because you've already approved it. I appreciate it because we need to see them and I think it exactly. gives everybody else. Mm -hmm. and, and we'd also like to be confident that what we have approved actually happens the year after year if it doesn't the price doesn't go up or something like well, that. Well we notified when that happens. Well when we sign the contract it is for that amount of money. So they can't just up it on us in the middle of the contract. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Pass. Yes, absolutely. Good evening, Dr. Kane and members of the executive team, Captain Kelly and members of the board. I'm Bridget Passon. I'm the English language arts supervisor for grades three through twelve. The contract you have in front of you from Pearson is for our high school English core classes. We had a three-year contract with Pearson um, that has since moved into now a one-year, a year-to-year -year, uh, situation because we are looking to, we look to renew our textbooks every five to six years. So as we start planning for a new pilot, should we start planning for a new pilot, instead of renewing a three-year contract with them, we're going year-to-year. The request you have in front of you is to refund um, our licenses for our students so they have ac access to the textbook and activities on the online platform, um, to replenish consumables because the textbook does happen to be a consumable, meaning that students can use it to um, write, annotate, um, mark the text so they can have deeper conversations and, 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 it, and it lends to great writing assignments in it as well. Um, and there is also um, funding in there for a novel um, that uh, we are going to put into the English 10 honors curriculum. So there's a set for, um, for each high school there. And are we set on Pearson? We didn't get this bitted out to anyone other than Pearson. So we have been with Pearson for three years. Um, and again, we keep, when we did our, a few, about two years ago, when we did our financial forecasting, we looked at renewing our textbooks on, a, on about a five-year cycle. Okay. So what, as a side note, what kind of I'm happy to report is that um, a lot of the counties, and in particular a lot of the counties on the Eastern Shore, are going to P the Pearson textbook for their core programs. Um, I have, we have a meeting next week with other Eastern Shore supervisors, um, and we're going to present some of the curriculum we've written from the Pearson textbooks to them as well. Um, and we're, we're gonna work kind of collaboratively as, a, as an Eastern Shore Consortium um, for the other counties who, who've purchased Pearson as well. Uh, my understanding, because it was purchased before, I was lucky enough to, to, to be invited to take this position. They did go through the vetting and piloting process and, and got various bids. And then the English teachers voted on which one they wanted and Pearson was selected. What was the three-year contract, what was its value? It, pardon me? The three year, you said previously we had a three year contract. What was its value? Oh, goodness. I believe we were in about the, the 160 to 200,000 for initial adoption and the three year re replenishment. So if it's 160, 54 is about the same cost mm -hmm. for annually. Next. Why do we go to one year? Because we are, because we want to stay current with literature that we use and make sure that, that contemporary literature as it evolves gets, gets woven into our curriculum. So in doing that, you want to look at possibly replenishing your textbooks every five to six years. We don't have to, um, but 
it, it, it's what's recommended kind of overall to make sure that we, we take a look at what else is on the market to see if there's some new, you know, fresh literature that we need to, to bring into our curriculum. And do you, go ahead, go ahead. Are there other people that do this service? I mean, we're, we're happy with these people, understand. Yes. And you, but are there other people when you bid, I mean, you weren't here, but when they bid it out, there's other bit people that can do this kind of? Absolutely. Yes, sir. So our other vendors have been um, HMH, which is Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Um, our elementary textbook is through McGraw. So we go through lots of, of vendors that are that are renowned to make sure that, that we're bringing in um, the best choices. And then we use our, our, our stakeholders, our teachers, to help us make decisions. You have a smell test. It's just, this is a, a, fig, a good figure. Yes, sir. I mean, I'm not down to the dollar, but it's in the, the range. Of yes, and be. we were very conservative with our requests. Um, we didn't we didn't overdo it. I worked with chairs at both high schools to make sure that teachers and every student was getting exactly what they needed. We weren't hyper padding these numbers or anything like that. Um, we went to that. We went to the table about three times to make sure that we were using our enrollment projections. Um, at, to, to make these decisions. So these these are these were very conservative requests. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. That the next time this comes up, bring those other bids with you. And it, because legally, by law, we have to look at those other bids as a part of the process. So that would have been handled when they initially adopted. Yeah, got, yeah. So the, and this isn't the initial adoption. So this is a continuing of what we already had in place. So that's why she well, wouldn't have brought those. what I'm asking is, is it the best thing for us to use? Yeah, because we're not adopting something new. We're continuing with the program that we already had. So when we begin to adopt a program, when it's new, so we have some books over here that we put out for public display. When we first look at a program, then we get all of those bids, and that's presented to the boards because that we put out for RP. So we but have for a, this one, that's not that. But we have, a, we have data that proves that the Pearson is the best thing to use. Yes. Okay. And they actually have an, have an ED report with a very high rating that indicates that, that the curriculum that they have built in with theirs is highly aligned. And we just take that, um, you know, align it with some uh, Merrill, now MCAP, but prior with some park practice, um, pre-AP strategies, AP strategies okay. um, infused a little bit. But yes, it has, it has a wonderful reputation. Would we possibly be able to get into um, bidding with contracts with the other counties if everybody jumps on board? You Is know, that that's possible? something I need to learn more about. I've heard I mean, piggybacking or power. something. Yes, I think um, one of our Eastern Shore counties may have piggybacked on another county on the Western Shore that was a little bigger to purchase theirs. I, I have to look more, more into that um, and get more guidance on that. But okay. um, a lot of the Eastern Shore English supervisors are new, so uh, we're kind of... Right. You know, we're, we're getting the band that was never together again back together again because the, the supervisors who preceded us did meet a monthly and were a consortium of themselves. So we're hoping to collectively make those fiscally responsible decisions as well. So you're, you're looking at a three to five year window to have this program in. We're, we're in our third year and now we're extended to the fourth year. Yes. For when we And this is prior to you. I'm just talking yes, to, for the sure. board. When we bid it for the first three years, knowing we're going to probably do in a year or two extension, would it be... A, prudent that you have some kind of fixed cost at that time rather than now? It would, I, again, I'm, I'm not sure what, what, right, I'm Did hearing we that we're, this is, we, we won't have this year. for five years. Mm -hmm. So we had our first contractors for three years, knowing that we're going to probably renew it one or two more years to it. Mm -hmm. If we did our three-year contract, mm -hmm. and you're telling me it's somewhere between 160 and 200,000, mm -hmm. could we then say, okay, we want to opt for our fourth year for 20,000 and our fifth year for 20 because we're already into the system rather than have to rebid it out and pay 54. I don't know if they do that. I'm just asking if you know you're going to probably extend this contract, you have an option for the fourth and fifth year if that's your projection to have it longer. So we'd have a, I mean. Would it be, would it, would it look, would it be lucrative for Pearson to give us another year now and we would get a better rate for next year? I mean, is that, I mean, does anybody, it's, do we have anybody that could be able to? Well, we can, we can look into that. That wasn't negotiated. I can tell mm -hmm. you that. Okay. But we can certainly but it's look an into I mean, it. it's an idea. As it far could as, be. Again, the buying power in it. That but we, we won't need to buy those. Not those books. Again, right. 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 Because those consumables have been in use for three years. Right. Yes. So we won't need to do this again next year. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just, you know, I like know any, what you're like talking any, about, like though. You, buy, mm -hmm. yeah. you can make the deal. Mm -hmm. but once you make the deal, mm -hmm. add-ons cost you. Sure. And if you can do it yes. before time in, because they want to sell it to you. Absolutely. Once they got you, they don't need to throw that hook in the water anymore. 
<laughs> Absolutely. So if we're doing this one year now mm -hmm. and, and thought of the future, maybe we make some of kind of a bargain for next year. But that's what we're saying. We won't need to purchase these workbooks again next year. So this They'll is last it. for They'll another last three, three years. years right. right. Yeah, but isn't there no, the, more to uh, this than just the books? It's the novel. It's the novel and the tech licenses. Right. So the licenses will be mm -hmm. have to be renewed at a cost. Oh, that's always the cost. And that yes, goes. I so think what's important finish. is that we, we want to use enrollment numbers. And also, too, as we work to increase the numbers in our AP classes, the numbers in our 12th and 11th grades will hopefully decrease. So I completely understand going for a two year contract. But if we're being very conservative with our numbers and using our enrollment to make our buying decisions, I'm just sense. curious, does it make more sense to go year to year? Gotcha. Um, now, Pearson has been great to us, and they have a lot of our, of our contracts. So I think, you know, maybe be more mindful about how we negotiate or... Jumping as, on Mount, yeah, Montgomery my, or PG. My brothers from, or my brothers from my C&I family have some textbooks from Pearson's. If we all get together and say, you support our contents, what can you do for us? Mm -hmm. right. yeah. I'm uh, done. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank Any you. other thank questions? All right, thank you. Thank and congrats you. on the supervisor. <laughs> so we need to approve the renewal to renew licenses and purchase consumables from Pearson to deliver core English instruction in grades 9 through 12 and to purchase the novel All the Light We Cannot See to be included in the English 2 Honors Curriculum. So I need a motion to that. Fiscal dollar amount. Oh, and where sorry. It's coming from. And the fiscal dollar amount is $54,997.63 to come out of the FY 2020 operating budget. So moved. Second. second. Okay, a motion and a second. Mrs. Wright. Well, members, please respond once I call your name. Captain Kelly? Yes. Mrs. Harper? Yes. Mrs. Morissette? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I have four in the affirmative. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Pass. Uh, next one uh, up for uh, contract approval is the, the Cambio Group. So I'll do that one. Um, Cambio Group is a group that we use to provide professional development for our cultural proficiency training. They work with all of our ANS, all of our administrators and supervisors. Uh, they are in our ANS meetings at least twice a year. I think this past year we had them here three times. And they are also working in individual schools. So they do a lot of that work with uh, cultural proficiency, bias training, and all of that work. We're funding this uh, $71,000 with Title II and Title IV funds. And we're requesting approval to continue that professional development. So my question on this is, we're renewing the contract. Was it 71000 last year? And it's 71000 this year? I believe it was. I can double check. Uh, but it's somewhere in that range. It may be slightly less because our funding has decreased a bit. But I can double check that. Do we have the travel expenses from last year? How much it cost us extra on that? I mean, because... That's, that's an open-ended amount. The, the travel expenses um, were less than what was anticipated last year for the Cambio Group. We're very diligent in monitoring those expenses as they come through. I can get you an exact dollar amount. But roughly, what was, it, what was it? If you give me a minute, I can probably look it up. Okay. Um, I just don't want to, you no, know, no, no, we I just don't know it was less either. than what was budgeted on the, on so the purchase order. What is the travel? Travel what, for what's, what? what's, it, what's on the purchase order this time? It would be for this amount here. Well, it says 71, but doesn't say what the expenses are. Plus travel. That's just it. It's open-ended. Yeah. Look, if you give me just one second, oh, I'll, sure. I'll look it up. What else do we use federal uh, Title II and Title IV grant funds for? It's, pro it's professional development for the That's most all. part. Um, and also some ELL um, training. And we have that Those much language money. language learner, sorry. We have that much in a grant for this. It's not a lot. Yeah, we see that. And I know we're restricted to only use, mm -hmm. like, Title II money. Those are restricted funds. Correct. That was mm -hmm. restricted just for professional, professional yep. development, yep. if I recall that. Do we have anything else in our system that we would use that money for? It's just a question. Those, those two funds? That, that just, that's yeah. specifically for this. And it can't go to anything else? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. These are restricted funds, okay. travel funds. And, and I don't want to hold this meeting up, but when it says 71000 plus travel and expenses, if we have that number, 
either previous number from last year okay. or what's in this year, mm -hmm. I think would be appropriate to put a note on here. Yeah. Just And then if it goes over that or under, if it goes over, then they can either at discretion of whoever's responsible sure. can make that decision if it's reasonable, but at least we'll know if we're in the ballpark when we when we do our budgeting and also make some of these decisions. Absolutely, and, and recall that this, even the travel and expenses is funded through these two funds. So none of still this is- It's still money. I, I understand I just, what you're saying. I, I, I just want, because you said budgeting, it's not operating budgets. That's okay. what it's I just want to make that but clarification. But can we, we could use this money somewhere else for That's title. That's what I just two. asked. No, no it's, 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 professional, it's, title, it's for the most part, it's professional development. We send professional development though. I mean, conferences, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just don't like to spend money to start with. Well, less. that's what this is for. Mm -hmm. So this keeps this allows us not to dedicate general funds. So this allows us to get professional development that we wouldn't otherwise be able to get. So this is what that's for. Yeah, that's the only reason why I don't like it to be open-ended either. That's the only thing I was just asking if he had a ballpark what, on it. So just the information I was able to pull here, I have one travel for um, one of the events was $1,500. So if you doubled that, we're looking $3,000 for travel for the two events um, that I believe they participated in. Okay. So we could put, I mean, not to exceed five percent or something uh, travel it. i mean we don't have it in there but i'm just thinking that would be and then if it was then we you know but five percent gives five percent of what forty seventy one thousand dollars i don't know that they're even i don't think it's even doing that, much. that well he's yeah. at 15 twice yeah, yeah about three, that's three thousand so, that's so if, I do, if I do five thousand times 71 is 3500 3, gives you a little yeah. flexibility just gives you some parameters where you have a you know you kind of know where it is that's all my and if, if it's different then it's it, you know if you have vital documentation you got it but it's not open-ended like you said. And again, these are federal grants, right. so we don't have any control over them and how much they go over. We don't have to worry and, about and they don't, for and we, can, and we don't go over. We can't go over because it's, it's a finite well, amount. You, you, your grant is 71. Mm -hmm. You're right. going over 71 with, with expenses. So well, that's but that would be included. I don't know exactly what the total amount for right. both of right. those are, Title II and Title IV. I don't have that data right in front of me, but it's not just 71,000 together. So it allows for that. This has to go through a couple of different processes. So the state monitors this. It's not that that we're, we'd let them go fly first class and, and all of that. It's not that. It has okay. to be monitored. I'll apologize. I get your point. I'll apologize you, you, now. you have to come, ask the question. I come you from do. the private sector and I understand you're an educational side. It's a different world. Yeah. And I just, I, yeah. I'll probably ask this question again before it's, it's over. okay. You can gotcha. ask the question. You have to ask the question. Okay. All right. I don't have any more. So, any other questions? What year are we in using Cambia? We used them last year. We're using them again this year. Um, I'm not sure if Mr. Uh, Paluski used them the year before I came. They did not? Okay, so this is the second. This ends the second year, so we'll be going into the third year. And has data collection started to rate their effectiveness? Absolutely, and particularly at the uh, school levels. So we identify certain schools. They worked with uh, uh, four schools this year, and so they go out to the schools, they meet with the staff, they do professional development, they uh, go to classes, visit classrooms with uh, those four schools, and we'll continue those four schools, but we'll be able to add, I believe, two more schools this year. Uh, so as we don't go over the amount, we'll, shut, we'll cut down one time with their visit for ANS so that we can allow another school to join. Um, so it has been it has been successful, and we can certainly um, give you some data on that. Okay. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. Yep, evaluations. That's great. Mm -hmm. And yeah. feedback from the staff. Evaluations. Yep, that's exactly what that is. Oh, okay. Evaluations I, I thought, for I that thought, professional I thought it was development. Just an ANS. Okay, mm -hmm. that's great. Well, then if we do this every, you know, next year, I mean, it would be good to see the trend on, on the effectiveness of it. And if it doesn't work, then we don't do it again. Yep. I mean, okay. Okay. So I'm looking for a motion to approve the renewal of the contract for about $71,000 and give or take 5% for travel and expenses with the Cambio Group. Um, the funds to be taken from federal Title II and Title IV grants. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor? This is right. Board members, Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. Ms. Lissette? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I inform you affirm the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. King. So our next contract is performance matters, and I believe Mr. Oh, okay. I thought Mr. Watkins was coming forward. Are you? 
You're doing performance matters. Oh, come on forward, Miss. And this is Miss Forbes. Am I saying that correctly? Julie Forbes, our new testing and accountability uh, supervisor. So welcome, Miss Forbes. Great. Welcome. Thank nice you. To, nice thank to you see for you being here. Nice. Yes. Uh, nice to meet you all. See you all. Uh, thank you so much and good evening. Um, so it's my pleasure to present the performance matters contract. We have been working with performance matters for approximately 12 years. Um, it is our how we um, you know, really look at student assessments, um, administer them across the school. Um, it's our data warehouse and really where we house a lot of those um, like analytical tools that we're able to use to really help um, improve student achievement and really get a close look at how our students are performing um, and, and how we can help, uh, help them achieve at even higher levels. And so this is the tool that we use to administer a lot of the local assessments. Those are the assessments that happen throughout the school year to monitor our students and their progress. We also um, have the ability to bring in other data sources such as our state testing data, attendance data, demographics, and so, um, it's just an excellent tool to, um, that, that we used uh, down to the teacher level to really evaluate how our students are performing and, and what we can do um, to help them get to that next level. And the total contract, it's a one-year contract um, that covers all of the student licenses. It's $68,178, um, sorry, $68,178.60 which works out roughly student license, um, about $8.83 uh, per student. Uh, thank you. Question I have, it says on the purpose, it says August 2018 to 2020. Uh, that's an error, that should actually be um, August 1st, 2019, my apologies. Actually, it should be 19 rather than, eight. it's a one year, con it's not yes, a it's contract. a one year contract, you're correct. Contract. Yeah, thank you for catching that. So Performance Matters is really your hub program for your mm -hmm. other analytical? Okay. Yeah, and there's a lot of great capabilities with it because it is now owned by PowerSchool, which is our student information system. And so as the two companies continue to merge, the potential for having all of your data in the same place um, really is, is really allows you to do a lot of just powerful research to really evaluate our programs and our services for students. So, And there's no other companies that offer those services? There are. This is um, a very robust tool. We've been using it for 12 years. There are other assessment platforms out there that do exist. I was only wondering because this much money, we should be bidding it out. Has, has anyone thought about that? So that's a pretty major, we, we need to, to be, be yeah. And, and you couldn't start just now okay, because you. we'd have to do training. We'd, it, it's a major thing. When you transition from one platform like that to another, you generally start with a pilot on a small number of schools so you can work out the kinks so that we're not testing and using that platform while we're just trying it out and being trained on it. Okay. So it's usually at least a year transition overlap. So you keep the one that you're currently using and if you're looking at bringing on another one, you start transitioning schools with that one. So it's not something that you can flip like that. Okay. If we've been doing this for 12 years, and you won't know this probably right <laughs> now, but I'd like to find out what was the initial contract 12 years ago. Sure. Because from what you just said, if I knew as a bidder, what you just told me, and I knew you were, you, I, I've got you, you know, you're going to be renewing and it's hard to transition. If it's a reasonable increase, three or 4% a year, that's one thing, but you know, you don't want to be gouged knowing that you, you can't move. And that would be my only thing if we haven't bid it out. I, yeah, I'm sure we have the records. I'm under the impression the contract increased 5% this year. Um, and you also have to calculate in the intangible costs. Uh -huh. So because we've been using this system for so long, we really are able to do all of the how, uh, the training in-house. And so that saves us because these contracts only cover the student licenses, but because we have um, our staff so proficient in the system, we're able to do all of the training in-house. Um, so that's, that's a benefit. I understand the cost of transition mm -hmm. would be astronomical too. Yes. Mm -hmm. but just make sure that you know, this is at a reasonable inflation mm -hmm. cost over the 12 years. That would, if we're not going to bid that, at least we know we're, you know, mm -hmm. staying on it. I can look into that yeah, for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is this platform, uh, how about our new teachers, mm -hmm. our new staff? It, it's, they can get it, get on it, get work it. It's, yep. We have training scheduled. Um, it's right, already scheduled actually question. for our new teachers. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's easy, accessible and Yes, um, I can use just due to my background, I've seen a number of student information systems and assessment systems, um, and I've used quite a few. And I can tell you that this one is very user friendly and intuitive. Um, it's it's a it's a good it's a good product. So if we were to look at others, would that mean you'd also have to change if you're changing your platform, you have to change 
your analytical programs that are using this as a hub? Yes, I, I'm, there's 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 pieces um, that when you switch systems, so there's a lot of back end work that happens with the automation of the system. So you kind of have to calculate in those aspects. We you still would have the data somewhere, but how you know you have your staff trained to access it. Um, it. It does really you build the capacity of a district over time with systems like this, and we're in a really good spot because we have so many well trained staff. So I think it probably it could hinder the process of people being able to access data, just having to learn it. So that answers that. And learn a new system. Correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in that vein, not to push too much on this, but would it be useful after 12 years now to, to actually just right now start, look out there and just see what's available and if there's something better and cheaper, maybe decide in a year that maybe we will bite the bullet and do something new. Just a thought. Um, mm -hmm because that's a long time to be with the same company. Not that they aren't great. I mean, I, you know, I've experienced power school a lot, well, so. Well, yeah. maybe over the next six months, look and see what else is available right. and see if, if, is there something more up that, not up to date, more fits our system better, to give us better information, or we're in the right, right direction. Because the dollar, dollar isn't about, everything because right. it, there's a lot of variable costs, yeah. but no, we right. need to be due diligent. And they do their diligence in upgrading their system. So it's not the same exact system that it was 12 years ago mm -hmm. either. So they, they do meet needs. and But we certainly are happy to look that up. We can do mm -hmm. that. And what's everybody else using? What, Most you know, of them use this. Yeah, PowerSchool is well used um, actually across the world. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just, just personal note, did... Did you use it out in California? Um, we didn't, but it's a California company. So um, yeah, we had used, uh, but most of them are. I think most of the student information systems and assessment systems are California-based, but a lot of my colleagues in the county that I worked in did use it, so at the other unified school districts. It's certainly, now that it's, um, that it's owned by PowerSchool, they're one of the big ones. Um, you're, you're in good hands with PowerSchool because they are a global brand and they're very innovative. and just their long-term planning, they've been acquiring other products and systems. So again, in my experience, using a variety of different assessment systems over my career, this is, um, again, very user-friendly and intuitive, very easy to train on. And when you, um, I, I think, again, our goal is to get our users, our teachers, our principals, our staff, to really be able to quickly access the data. And, and this system does uh, a really good job. And I'd be happy to you know, show it to anyone um, if, if you'd ever like to see it and we could sit down. It's, it's, it's a great system, so it, it's a good choice. Yeah. So the only thing that needs to be changed on here then, Mr. Pfister, is the date? Yes. Well, under purpose, it says 18, it should be 19. Mm -hmm. Under action, it does have 19 to 20, but under purpose, just for the document, it should probably say 18. Yes, okay. you're right. Mm -hmm. okay. We'll adjust that. Thank you. Okay, so I need a motion to approve the renewal of the ongoing contract with PowerSchool for the use of the performance matters assessment data warehouse and analytics with a renewal date of August 1st, 2019 and continuing through July 31st, 2020 for the cost of $68,178.60 and will be budgeted through our FY20 operating budget. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion is second, Mrs. Wright. Again, board members, please respond when they call your name. Kathy Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Morissette? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I have one the affirmative motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay. Next contract is uh, for the STARS 360 platform. Yours. It's Mr. Watkins. Mr. Watkins, the future principal of Congratulations. Congratulations. The current Rob. principal. Thank you very much, Earth. Current. Yes. Okay. July 1. Uh, yeah. for, very proud of you. Thank you. Very happy for you. Thank you. For, for the record, my name is Rob Watkins, uh, current principal of Southernsville Middle School, uh, formerly supervisor of MathMax. Uh, today I'm presenting to you a request for a contract to bring back Star 360 to our district. Um, STAR 360 is a universal screener platform and a resource to support our uh, English learners in our district. We, tip, we, we previously had had STAR 360 during the 16, 17, and 17, 18 school year. And unfortunately, uh, funding was cut uh, last year that uh, disallowed us to continue to contract into this year. The purpose of universal screen is to provide all students in K-8 an opportunity to show us what, what they know in order to catch uh, any students who need extra supports uh, during their educational year. 
Um, this, uh, in addition, uh, Maryland recently passed Senate Bill uh, 734, the Maryland Ready to Read Act. That act requires uh, Early, um, early assessment and screening for all of our students in pre-K to two. This, uh, this contract brings us into, into compliance with that law. Uh, additionally, the funding uh, for this uh, contract is being made available through the Restricted Transitional Supplemental Instructional for Struggling Learners Grant provided through the Kerwin legislation. So not out of our 2020 restricted operating budget. Uh, this, is, this is being funded out of Kerwin dollars, yes. It and it is that's exactly what that means. Okay, right. that's it, what that means. It's because the Kerwin funds are restricted. Right. Okay. This is what it, the restricted Sorry. Kerwin funds is funding this. You threw Kerwin in there. That's why it doesn't stay Kerwin yeah. on here. So can I ask a question? Is, is can, Are we bidding this out? To, with, are there other companies that do this? Yes, there are other companies that, that, that do this. Uh, we, two years ago, three years ago, when we initially brought in a universal screener, we reviewed all the available screeners at, the, at that time. Uh, this year, we did decide to bring back a, the screener that we had previously used in order to ensure a, a very clear implementation during the school year. Um, when we initially purchased this product, we spent a great deal of time training our teachers, our, our, our school-based administrators, and essential office staff on how to interpret the data results and how to leverage the, that data to improve instruction in our buildings. It was, it was deemed that um, the, the extra costs that would be associated with bringing another platform to our district uh, would significantly impact and raise the cost and potentially make it uh, out of reach for us. Uh, additionally, I have, we did price this program against other programs, not publicly bid, but we did price it against it and it's, it's in alignment with other uh, associated programs. But the, the issue with this is since we're using Kerwin funds, there are criteria for use of these funds for struggling learners. And it is particularly for K through three. But what we found was that we were able to use this company and it really provides a sole source purchase for us because it will allow up to grade eight, I believe, right? Yes. From which covers K through three, and they will allow it. Whereas we couldn't just go and buy a K through three and not get the most bang for the buck and allow other grade levels to use it. So following the Kerwin legislation, this was the vendor that would take care of both of those things. You understand things. why I'm having to ask these questions, because if we don't, our feet are held to the fire. Sure. And if we don't have the bids for this, we get asked, why didn't you get bids for this? That's the only reason why, you know, I, I'm sorry if it seems like I'm grilling everybody on this, but I have to ask these questions to keep everybody, you know, compliant. Not at all. Um, and it's, I, I totally understand. You, could, you already have used this, you know how it works. Everybody here, you know, gets it. Um, the learning curve is less, I understand. It's just a lot of money and we have to ask these questions. I, I apologize. Sure. It, it, is a, it is a quality product. It is, it is a part of our um, data analysis system. Uh, it's a welcome piece back from all the building-based administrators. It does do K-8 uh, reading and mathematics and does provide a support um, on our licenses for our English learners to support their ling uh, English language acquisition. So it also includes math, you're saying? It does. It includes, oh, okay. this, this total cost includes a, a full <laughs> universal screen to ensure no, no child is being left behind. I see they gave us a discount too. They did. We did negotiate with them to ensure that we could all bring it to our, back to our district. Idea. I, will, I will say this, this contract happens to be um, uh, over $10,000 less than the previous contract. Because of the discount or because it got offered that way? Uh, yes, because, they want it because, because, they want because, because of this discount and, be, and because um, we wanted to combine all the services in, under one contract. Any other questions? Mr. Dickey, I'm fine. So I need a motion to approve a contract for the STAR 360 platform. Contract period from August 1st to July 31st, August 1st, 2019 to July 31st, 2020. And the dollar amount um, is $85,417.45 coming out of the FY20 restricted operating budget. So moved. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second, Mrs. Wright. Will the listing firm with her name is called, Chapman Kelly? Yes. Mrs. Harper? Yes. Mrs. Morissette? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I have four the affirmative motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Watkins. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you in a minute. Yes. Thank you. Next uh, one up is the license and consumables for Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. 
is passing again. Good evening again. I'm Bridget Passon, English language arts supervisor for grades three through 12. Uh, yes, three through 12. Uh, the contract in front of you is for the renewal of our reading interventions for grades three through eight, which are currently being funded by the Striving Readers Comprehensive Literacy Grant. The grant was a competitive grant uh, of which we applied for uh, last year and were granted a million dollars over the course of three years. Um, with a significant amount of that money, we looked at data from our tier two reading interventions uh, and found that the that best decision to help, um, to help our students was to kind of overhaul uh, our reading interventions, put reading specialists back in front of students um, as the experts running them with evidence-based and approved ESSA products. I'm really happy to report that 85% of our students improved their Lexile level. In layman's terms, that means that their accuracy, fluency, and comprehension improved over the course of last school year. The majority of them improving 100 Lexile points or more, which is significant. Um, so this contract is for the renewal of those licenses um, of consum and of consumables, um, and we have a few um, coaching days left over from last year. Um, what's great about this product is that they have consultants and coaches who do real-time training for our reading specialists. Um, so that training, part of me, is not included in this contract. It's just for the materials, the consumables and the licenses, and then the hosting fee for all of that, for all of those licenses. What is a consume, which, what is a consumable? This, what the students write in. So they have a book that goes along okay, with the program. Okay, there's a book that goes, mm -hmm. okay. Yes. So the trainers, is what you have left over from the last year? Yes, the trainers training is left over from last year. We have about three more days um, oh, left, which is great. And I have a question on the, the program itself. Sure. The, the HMH, though, is the contract of the company and the interventions we used last year. How, how many years have we used them? We have used them in high school, in our high schools, mm -hmm. for a very long time. Uh, in our elementary and middle schools, when we looked at this, we were using 26 different programs across those schools. Um, so with, with it already being and working in our high schools, when we were doing our research to find out what was the best product on the market and what had the ESSA rating, because it's purchased with federal dollars, it needs a high ESSA rating. Um, HMH checked all our boxes. Um, a lot of my colleagues were looking at it for their counties as well and have since adopted it with Striving Readers Literacy Funds. Um, so that was, the, that was our method for selecting it. So it replay, you dropped some of the, I was personally involved in some of the interventions okay. and yes. I always wondered if they worked or not, and because I, you know, wasn't sure what was working, or not, and I, I know we had, I had asked a couple of years ago if you all were looking at the evaluation of the intervention, get rid of ones that don't work, and so this particular one sounds like you were pretty successful last year with that yes, at the yes. elementary level. Every school met their annual, what, met, they um, had a target of growth determined. Every school met it, um, with several of our schools going going beyond. Um, wow. So it's been really exciting. I really want to publicly thank the reading specialists who took this on and ran with it and made it work. Um, and they're excited for another year of it. So of the other 26 different platforms that you were using, we have since wheedled those down to what few left? So what in some of the, what I, the research we had done in looking at how they were being used, um, we had found that there was a lot of funding that had been spent and the licenses weren't being used. So there were approximately eight of them that were tech-based where we weren't really using the amount of licenses we have purchased. Admittedly, we have dropped those tech, the, the tech uh, interventions. Um, and gone with this as our primary tier two interventions because it's systematic, because it does reporting across the board, because it has that reporting piece where an HMH consultant, uh, a vice president comes and presents to us twice a year on our data. Um, the interventions that were book-based, um, hard copies are still there for um, students. We have a handful of students in each school where System 44 Read 180 might not be the best fit for them. So we still have resources um, in the event that Read 180 or System 44 aren't appropriate uh, resource, interventions right. for, the, for our students. So we have backups for we have backups. our students. Okay. Yes, Ms. Thank you so much. Yes. 
Good. So I need a motion to renew licenses and purchase the consumables from Houghton Mifflin Harcourt um, in grades three through eight. Contract period is August 2019 to June 2020 in the amount of $29,637.95. And it is budgeted for three years. Wait, year three. Oh, we're on year three. I'm sorry. It's uh, FY, uh, I mean, uh, 2019 to 2020. Striving Readers Comprehensive Literacy Grant. So moved. Sign in a second. Second. Okay. A motion and a second. Mrs. Wright. Just so much your name is called. Captain Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. And for the affirmative motion carries. Thank you. Done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Agile Mind. Mr. Watkins is coming back. Good evening again. Hello. Uh, here I present to you a request for a contract to extend Agile Mind into next year's school year. This is a one-year contract. Um, Agile Mind is a program that we use that supports 12 of our secondary math courses, beginning with grade six mathematics, continuing on through Algebra two at the high school level. Uh, this is a coherent and strategically aligned program that is tightly aligned to the high school and middle school mathematics standards and allows continual updates of the program. Uh, this program has been in use in middle school since the 14-15 school year, and next year will be our sixth year of usage. Uh, at the high school level, next year will be the fifth year of usage. In addition to the, the, the program itself, the, the, the instructional resource, it also comes with a high quality <laughs> assessment bank that allows teachers to create formative and summative assessments that are tightly aligned to the standards and to the instructional program. So what's our historical date on this? It's working? Yes. What, I mean... Yes. So when you look at our state, our state achievement data, um, so for instance, for, for literally for the past five years in Algebra 1, we've ranked in the top five in the state. Um, when compared to other districts, always number one uh, on the Eastern Shore. Um, that, that's the data that we'll, we'll cite there. The, the middle school and the, and the other high school data uh, is also strong. So this is just a renewal of a contract that we've been doing for the last few years. That's correct. At this point, it's been a one-to-one -one contract. Uh, to date, Agile Mind has not pr pr presented to us a significant savings by going to a multi-year deal. So we've, we've stuck with a one-to-one -one contract. We have not seen a significant increase since the initial implementation of this program. Uh, I, I want to say the, the initial implementation of this program in 1415 uh, was just a few percent uh, lower than it is today. They've held their um, rate standard. Are there any other counties using this we couldn't piggyback with and try to bargain better? There, there are not a lot of Maryland districts that, that have been using Agile Mind. Uh, Worcester County uses it, uh, Washington County has used it, and Baltimore County has used it. Uh, currently, the closest uh, related district is Calvert County. So and nobody's like trying to join forces to get better, better prices out of these guys? I, I'm not certain. Okay. Okay. Other questions? I, I will say this mm -hmm. so, so when you when you look at the when you look at the cost of this program uh, over the course of the five years it's still a significantly less than the cost of a textbook and the online platform allows for ready um, renewal and updates uh, we participate with the update process with agile mind they consult with our teachers to ensure that we're getting the best high quality program uh, they are a very responsive program and we feel strongly that um, it has uh, positioned our math program to be the best on the shore if we threw textbooks in this, it would be three, four hundred thousand easy. easy. Yep. So, and it serves twelve courses. Right. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not questioning that mm -hmm. at all. I get. I get it. We had a lot more um, angst about it when it first came in. Remember, um, we were we were on the board oh, when yeah. it first came in, mm -hmm. and it's been and, and look how well it's doing. At least yes. with my child. And the, the teachers are very comfortable using it. It's a. It's a. They, they really have done a good job embracing the instructional changes that we've asked. Um, in our math program. The program has leveraged us to really incorporate higher level thinking into the program and it really has eased the, uh, the workload of our teachers to ensure that, that, that we're doing the, the right things with our kids and being as most efficient as we possibly can. Mr. Fister, where does this come out of in the operating budget? Is this, what is this list? Materials of instruction within, within okay. curriculum and instruction. Okay, thank we, you. We do cross, like, po not post, but talk to other counties, some contracts we send out so they and jump on it, it. And, yeah not jump on it but just know we're in the right if area and i don't know who we have in our if it's you so, or who we have in our system they can sit there and say 
you know, when you tell me other counties are doing it, which is that's your expertise, you as a financial guy can sit there and say, yeah, they're all in the 99 range or, you know, whatever. Yeah, so a lot of these contracts, and, and because of our resources, you know, being limited, we, we will either go out to bid or we will try to source it from a cooperatively purchased. But a lot of these type of instructional contracts also, because one county is, is offering, without going through that formal bid process, we're getting the same price as a Worcester or a Calvert, just without having to go through that bid process. Because some of these things do not have to be bid, and we just piggyback on those, you know, the, on those costs. So we do look at those kind of contracts um, with our meetings, the purchasing consortiums that we have, BrickPack and a couple of the other ones that we're members of, we do constantly look and work with the departments to see if there are other opportunities for savings. But just, uh, but if, I mean, I'm a Humber Stump supporting, if this is what you need, you've been doing it and it works for us, that's great. As a financial guy, are we in the ballpark making sure that, you know, our, our contracts are going in a, an appropriate way, in a, an efficient way? Yes. Because, you know, you're an educator and you're the guy that's watching yes. the dollars. Yes, yes, exactly. Thank you. Good. Is this one that it requires a bid or not? It does not. Okay. I have a question generally about the content. As a parent, when we get to the higher maths, it, is there ability for the student to pull it up for, for the parent to understand to try to help them when they have questions? Because without a textbook, my question is always, where's your textbook? So I can see it to refresh my memory. That is correct. Each student has an individual account. Uh, so they, the parent would have access through the student's individual account. Um, the, the, the program, so it, it's a, think of it as an online textbook. It's not a traditional textbook in a traditional sense if you think about what a textbook looks like. So it, it's, it's a little higher end in terms of the, the resources that are attached to it. But it has the same sorts of resources to provide supports um, for, for students at home. The breakdown and steps. That's right. Okay. And, and often it exceeds those expectations. And uh, Agile Mind has done a lot of adjusting over the years to ensure that those resources are easy to understand, easy to read, and easy to find in the platform. Easy for the non-experienced parent on computers to? I do believe so, yes. <laughs> and we have a parent guide on our math website that uh, uh, really walks you through, walks a parent through how to navigate the Agile Mind platform. Okay. It's, a, it's like a 10 page document that we put together a couple years ago that really provides a good overview on how to use the platform. Okay. One of the things I remember from back when it first came in is, is you offered, um, at the schools, you offered um, training class basically yep. it was advertised by the principals and the parents like I came in to see what this is all about and it's been a few years so maybe we ought to think of something like that um, for your relief to set something like that up because there are new new ones coming in they're going to start using it it's generally part of the sixth grade math night so okay. um, after a couple of years of implementation, we, uh, the, for instance, the current eighth grade students do not necessarily need that resource because they've been using it for two years. So the sixth grade, part of the sixth grade uh, implementation is generally, like, we pull them in and give them some, some, some understanding how to use it. It really is an easy program to navigate. You, re you really do just click on the topic and it takes you right into where you need to go. It's a, it's, I would say it's easier than a textbook. You're not flipping pages. It's organized in a very easy, easy fashion. Unless you're a parent. I, it well, it really <laughs> helped me. It really did help me back then. To, uh, I'm happy to, uh, to present to you guys and, and give you any information you'd like to have about the program. <laughs> I can't do sixth grade math. <laughs> this is a little off the subject, but do all, most of our students have access to the internet to get to this when they're home? Or is that a problem? I mean, just from your, yep. and maybe you don't, but is that an issue sometimes? Yeah, it is certainly an issue in, in, in my neck of the woods. Um, so not so mo the entire program is, is available offline too. So mo most of the homework is so you created. Can download it. That is correct. It is downloaded and provides them in paper format in order for them to go home and, and complete. Some there are some assignments that are created online, but every assignment that's created online can be created as a PDF. So anybody who needs access to it, and, and let's be clear that mathematics also isn't always done online. So very often the teacher decides to, to pull the PDF together and have them do it hands-on with the manipulatives and so they can solve the problems in the, in the, in the way they see fit. So, the, so if, a, if a child has a laptop, they can download it to actually take that with them in enough storage or whatever, hopefully the... T typically, the teacher downloads it as part of the class assignment and distributes it on paper. On paper, okay. Yeah, gotcha. Typically, uh, it's not typical for students to use the PDF version of it on their Chromebooks. Their Chromebooks don't really have the space in order to store that kind of stuff. It's really uh, an online tool. But they, but they, but somebody does not have access to internet at home. They do understand some of some people don't in a in a northern area. That is correct. I'll make sure I'll I'll make sure in my new role that uh that we're doing the right thing up there. <laughs> my my daughter's good here. 
<laughs> and I need all the help. Yes, yes sir. Any more uh, questions? No. Good. Okay, I need a motion to approve a contract for Agile Mind with a period from July 1st, 2019 to June 30th, 2020 in the amount of $99,986 to be taken out of the FY20 operating budget. So moved. Second. All in favor, Mrs. Wright. Remember, please confirm when your name is called. Captain Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I am forwarding your service. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the ARI contract. Yes, good evening, board members. Dr. King. I am uh, seeking approval tonight uh, for the replacement of the Queen Anne's County High School walk in uh, cooler freezer. Um, as some of you may know, that was installed in 1966, and it is 53 years old and it has met its life expectancy and then some. Awesome. Um, we have three um, bids listed there with ARI coming in at $72,310. Um, we have done work with them before, a reputable company, do good work, um, and they were the lowest uh, company to uh, place that bid in. So I was seeking re uh, approval for that tonight. Who do these other two contractors? Are they have they been have we done work with them too at other mm -hmm. facilities? Yes, but they're all. If, and if you look at it, they're all in the same ballpark. Right. I mean, the bids were very, but, very, and what very about tight. Service, are service, they yes. Adequate for yep. getting service if something goes yes. wrong. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was kind of surprised at how tight they were. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. That I mean, it's, you don't good. see that that often. No. You see a pretty large extreme. And to serve a A R I services in this area. Yes, sir. To your satisfaction. Yes, sir. How many did we need to replace? I know we talked about how many of these are. In well, the Graysonville Elementary School never had one. So we put Graysonville right. um, in there. Mm -hmm. We, um, Queen Anne's is our largest walk-in, obviously with the size of that school. Um, and if that were to go down, I mean, you're talking tens of 20, 30, $40,000 of, of food in there. Um, Bayside Elementary School would be the next one in line to be replaced. Um, mm -hmm just on the age of it. Usually what goes first is the compressors, um, and that's normally what fails. Um, this one, like I said, 53 years old, you're not getting a whole lot of R value out of the, uh, the walls and all that in there. I mean, it's, it's not efficient at all to run. So um, we will be replacing some in the future, but most of them are in pretty good shape, so. Well, all the schools on the island, except for Bayside, are pretty Pretty new. Yes, Mattapique Elementary School, Mattapique Middle School. Um, Glen Island High School. Yep. I mean, it's only 20, not yep. even 20 years. So we're, uh, we've been pleased with them. So Kennard Elementary will be one coming up. That coming they up don't too. have really a true, they have par a partial walk in, but it's not okay. really a true walk in. So that'll be coming up. We kind of like to space them out, you know, one physical year, next physical year. So it's not taking on so much money at one time. Any other questions? Or? Thank you. Anyone? So a motion, I uh, need a motion to approve the contract with ARI to provide Queen Anne's County High School with a new walk-in combination cooler freezer box, cooler condensing unit, freezer condensing unit, along with the power wiring and control wiring in the amount of $72,310 to be paid out of the FY20 capital. So Fine. moved. Second. All in favor, Mrs. Wright. Please confirm when your name is called. Captain Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Morissette? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I have four of your affirmative motion carries. Thank you. Um, the Another one. Next, next item I have is for the approval of um, a contract with Aegis Flooring. Each year we uh, lightly sand down our hardwood floors in the gyms, uh, dance studios, and then we reseal them and coat them. Uh, for the proper traction and as you can imagine the wear and tear that occurs on them with all the athletic events um, and, and dance studio um, activity. Um, we're seeking approval for uh, Aegis flooring for $57,355. Um, we again have been very happy with Weir's flooring. They're a reputable company that does University of Maryland, um, the Wizards uh, courts, so they've, they've been around for a while. Um, we also 
have installed rubber floors at Mattapeak Middle School, Stevens, I'm sorry, Mattapeak Middle School, Ken Island Elementary School, and um, Sellersville Middle School. And those need to be uh, cleaned till you get the proper traction. That's a, a smaller fraction of the cost of this. Most of the cost is resealing the floors every year to get that traction. And I will say this, the prices over the past several years have gone up because you have to use the green um, that are not emitting all the uh, negative, you know, chemicals. So the price of this has gone up the past several years. Um, about three years ago, it, it jumped dramatically, but it's leveled off right now. So one page here says that it's only 30 days after April 15th. So we're still, you still it's gonna- still, yep, yeah, okay. we'll honor it. Okay. This we do every year? Yes, sir. You looking into a multi-year contract doesn't save us anything or we it just depends on the product i mean if the product you know is you know on the market what it's going for you know we i could see if we no, could but get i mean deal. i guess yeah you have some kind of environmental change yeah that um, that, that really jumped EPA up when we went to the water-based uh, sealer so just curiosity what are the rubber gym floors for why are those particular schools it just is a new uh, feature that they have um, when they built the schools. It was before my, I was here in this position, but uh, different option. They, they seem to hold up very well. Um, like what are those rooms used for? No, no. The like gym, I know Middle has an auxiliary gym. So at Sellersville Middle School, that floor in the uh, gym is rubber. It's not hardwood floor. It's a, it's a rubber poured in place floor. Oh, okay. Um, and like I said, the two or three other schools have it, and it, it's actually worked out pretty well. Mm -hmm. The only thing we found the first year was it truly needs to be refurbished every summer just to make sure that you're getting all the dirt and the minerals and all up out of it. Salt, um, when we have weekend activities, is a real uh, bummer on it. So, any other questions? Mm -hmm. they, they led to a lot of slipping. Right. Yes. It was a when I, when the first year they had them, right. they, they weren't cleaned properly. Yeah. And, um, and now that all... we also have the ride on machines at the schools that uh, we also clean them ourselves. But to get that proper traction and you get the warranty with it and the inspection of it, you know, it, it saves us in the long run insurance wise. Okay. You mind having more questions? Okay. I need a motion to approve the contract with. E EGIS Floor Life LLC to provide coating for the hardwood gym floors and restorative care for the rubber gym floors and the amount of $57,355 to be paid out of the FY 2020 operating budget. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Mrs. Wright. Board members, please respond to what your name is called. Captain Kelly. Yes. Mrs. Harper. Yes. Ms. Morissette? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I have four in the affirmative. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Pender. Okay. Oh, oh, Ms. Pullen. Ms. Pullen. Yep. Good evening once again, members of the board and Dr. Kane. For the record, my name is Carla Pullen. I'm the facilities planner with Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Uh, this evening, I'm here to discuss with you contract approval for um, and additional services to an existing project that we are working on at Ken Island High School. We're in the process of replacing the energy management system or the HVAC controls there. We were fortunate that the construction project came in slightly under budget. And as an additional service with Guype Associates, we would like to add building commissioning, commissioning for the HVAC system. Essentially what this does is assures that all components of the project and the specifications are done and working as they were intended to. The controls, as you can imagine, are a very, very complex system, especially now that everything is computerized. So the commissioning process will be looking at all of the heating and cooling devices. They'll be looking at all the valves, which we have 144 potentially more within that building. There are sensors, there are fans, there are dampers, controllers. Everything needs to work together and it's somewhat of a snowball system. Each unit talks to the next to make sure that we're maintaining and regulating temperature within the building. Guype Associates is the current MEP engineer that's on the project. 
So this is an additional service to their existing contract and we're using the pricing that was given to us from them from a pre-bid existing contract. Um, it's a large investment. We think that since we are under budget, this is something that's definitely, definitely worthwhile to do and it'll be helpful to our maintenance staff to help maintain the HVAC, HVAC, HVAC system um, for years to come. So we don't have to have this bitted out because we're already it's working already in there, yes. It's already in there, yes. Okay. And your, money? the investment for this is a million dollars um, at Ken Allen High School for the project. Um, and I'm a, I'll, I'll say this, many, many years ago, a lot of these commissioning projects didn't occur. Um, and we, we pay for that in the long run um, by getting buildings that aren't quite where they should be. Um, and I, this one, when it is turned over to us, it will be true tested and what it can handle and what it can do. It's, it's a pretty complex system. What do we have like a change order? Yes, it's, it's essentially a change order. Um, it is just adding to the scope of what GAIP originally proposed. And again, this was on our radar at the beginning of the project, not knowing where the construction budget would come in. It wasn't something that we allotted in the beginning. Now that we know that we have the funds available, we're asking to do the additional service. Did we do this service when we did Stevensville Middle School? Yes. yes. Okay. And when, when we did Sellersville? Sellers, well, yes. Yep, the buildings that were done after yes. Ken Island. Yes. Knowing what had happened. Yes. And I have to show you, this is our Graysonville Elementary. This is for a sixth classroom edition, and this is our commissioning right. report. It's, it's just very detailed, and it's something that we think is really important for a building the size of Ken Island High School. We didn't have that in as an alternative for that project. We could have. That's one way to handle it. The additional services is the other way. Um, we're also talking 20 years ago. We, when we, when we oh, built this, this uh, no, this was for, yeah, for the, uh, for the actual oh, I design contract for yeah. the EMS upgrades. Okay. Now, does this include any training or making sure our staff maintains this stuff, understands what's how it? Yes, that's part of what's written into the manual. Our staff will also be on site when they do specific things such as startup to make sure that there are very specific processes as to how we start each of the pieces of equipment up again once all of this has been in place and our staff will be involved in that training as well. We also sure. have include the maintenance department in the progress meetings. So the foreman is always there along with Carla. And then when we're looking at different systems, we actually include maintenance and in their opinion because they're the ones that are working on it. They right. gotta know what's going on. So uh, it's a pretty good triangle they have going on with that. So it's cross training. Perspective. That's yes. correct. Definitely. Any more questions? Okay. All right, I need a motion to approve the contract with GIPE Associates to provide building commissioning services for the HVAC control upgrades project that is currently underway at Ken Island High School in the amount of $63,000 to come out of the FY 2018 capital budget, which was the, the budget allotted back then, which we are saving money on, right? Yes, now. that's correct. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor of Mrs. Wright? Vote on this please find me. Name is called Captain Kelly. Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Wissett? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I am for in the affirmative. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Poulin. Next, custodial supplies. Last item that we have uh, for my area is the approval of a contract with DACON, um, who provides our custodial equipment supplies, um, vendor management inventory they do for us. And we piggyback on Fairfax County Public Schools contract, which is the 13th largest school system in the nation, which gives us a little bit of extra, uh, you know, buying power just based upon the volume that they deal with. Um, we've been using uh, piggybacking on this contract for several years now and have had a lot of success with it. And we're seeking to have that renewal done again this year for $300,000. Oh, it says estimated three hundred thousand dollars. What is in excess excess of? But it shows seven. on here annual. Last year it was like three fifteen fifty or five hundred. It yeah. It just depends. I mean, we have about three hundred thousand dollars in there for that particular item. Sometimes last year we used three fifteen. Yep. So sometimes I'm going to have to pull from another area, just depending on what's going on at that school. I mean, if we have like a flu epidemic or something like that, or if we're having you know different graduation events and all, 
the supplies that we need, you know, we're going to need a lot more supplies. So it's it's hard to budget that. Um, but we have stayed right around in that figure. Three hundred, sir. Yes, sir. And has that been a constant number for the last couple of years? It's it's one item, yes, that in next year's budget, we're going to really have to take a look at and add a little bit extra to that, just based upon the prices. Oh yeah, inflation you know, going we up it. and worse status quo so and there's no way to do instead of making annual there's no way to do a two and three year contract I can ask them that that's I mean the, the, might a lot of these list. contracts if you notice are out through 20 21 23 I see um, the next one that's up is not until October of 2019 well, it says a cust custodial paper related to special yeah there's so basically you're there's different bids with Fairfax um, county and some of them for paper supplies, other, you know, vendor management, inventory, equipment. Um, I will say this in the past several years, Fairfax, when they put it back out to bid, Dacon has come back in with that, uh, the lowest bid every time that I'm aware of. So, um, a lot of these will be a multi-year. When they did, do they deliver to each school or do they deliver yes. to a warehouse and no. So years ago we had five foremen. Mm -hmm. And products came from all over different creations, and they would distribute them to the different schools. Now, with the vendor management, when you go into the custodial closets, there's a, uh, a minimum amount, a maximum amount. They go in there with the computer, scan it, boom. Next day, the products are delivered, put on the shelf, um, and we can actually keep better uh, track of the products that are being used. And are they so each school's ordered its own. Yes, sir. And we keep track of that to make sure they're being used accordingly or if something disappearing with that. Um, it's pretty detailed uh, reports that we get with that. So for, you know, you always hear these things, bring Kleenex to school. There should be enough Kleenex and everything, basic needs there at most schools. Toiletry items and all that, yes. I don't know about classes wanting during Kleenex, that, yeah. but, right. you know, when we're talking about toilet, toilet paper, paper and paper right. towels and all that, yeah. So currently, Mr. Mister, right now, we only have $300,000 allotted for this in the budget. So this is lumped with all other custodial supplies? This is just the estimated that we spend on this particular contract with this particular company. So instead of saying estimated, we just can say 300000 Are we? Could, well, as Mr. We Pinder allotted that? to, if, if for some reason we need to buy 50 extra cases of right. toilet paper because we had a run on that or something. So that's, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry for the fun on words. <laughs> that, that's where the flexibility is needed in that particular contract. Certainly it wouldn't be $400,000 or something like that, but I'm just that's why I gave you the estimate of last year was three fifteen. The hard cost was three. That was the cost last year, three fifteen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, it was. What do we have budgeted right now? 300000 this is just a piece of that line item. Correct. Right. Like you said, the bottom line, if we have the flu season hits us hard, oh, yeah, yeah, it's going to yeah. be a little tougher. So, so our custodial supply budget is $280,000, but this is not just supplies. This is also including some of our equipment that we buy from them that would be in our other, other areas, which... Um, it would it come from other parts of the budget? Yes. Okay. But right. generally, yeah, this eats up the almost the entire custodial supply budget because Thank we buy you. just about everything from there. Because I don't like saying the word estimated oh, in, in, a, in a motion. That's fine. You know, we'll, we'll be held to the fire over that. So if we say 300000 and then we have to go back in and pull, do transfers, I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We should say up to 300000 We'll just budget 300. Just say 300,000. In, in a category thing, you do it. If you don't, you don't. I recommend just saying 300,000. And then again, we can do transfers. Okay. So it says, it says as in excess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. Just 300, and then we'll do a transfer. And, okay. and again, and just in the, the writing of that was simply because last year was 315. I, no, I'm, I'm glad it's here. I mean, it, give, it gives us something to look to consider down the road where we're going to pull it from. But, but also, as Mr. Pender mentioned, this is one of the areas that he typically pulls from other areas within custodial right. to fund this because his budget has not been increased in the last several years. Correct. Okay, I need a motion to approve the contract to Dacon Products Company Incorporated to provide miscellaneous custodial supplies, custodial paper and related dispensers, vendor managed inventory and custodial equipment. Um, the amount is three hundred thousand dollars, 
and it will come out of the FY 2020 operating budget. So moved. Second. All in favor, Mrs. Wright. Board members, please respond once your name is called. Kevin Kelly. Yes. Mrs. Harper. Yes. Mrs. Morissette. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. I inform the affirmative motion carries. Okay, great. Thank Ms. you. Mr. Fister, last one. Yes, thank you, Captain Kelly, um, Dr. Kane, board members. Um, yeah, last but not least, uh, and I'll try to keep the jokes to a minimum. Um, uh, before you is the uh, contract. It's really a subscription service. Uh, we've had it for years, 2011. This is the finance, payroll, and HR system. Um, the, the cost of this is $82,131.36. It is a hosted system. So if we were to pull in a system here and actually host it here in-house, we'd have server uh, issues that we'd have to you know, purchase and constantly maintain. So we've been doing this since 2011. It, it, like I said, it is our system. Um, as Ms. Forbes mentioned earlier, uh, this was a SunGuard product. It is now a power school product. So power school is becoming a conglomerate and we will see benefits from our finance, payroll and HR systems being able hopefully in the future as they combine these things, because this is still new, so that uh, to provide some data cross sharing that perhaps with our number of teachers, we can link up to number of students and things like that and, and have a cross uh, uh, functional uh, system with the SIS system. So we didn't bid this out. We didn't bid this out. We've, this is, this is one it. of those things where, uh, again, to. as we mentioned before, no, we, it, was, it was bid out, I'm assuming, back in 2011 because back then it was a loss in system. But when you go through an implementation like this, you're, you're talking huge costs to replace an existing system. And unless you're, the, the company goes out of business or you're extremely dissatisfied, that upfront costs would take years to recoup because most of these systems are, are priced accordingly. You know, you're not going to find one for half this price that can do exactly what this system does. So even though we may have some benefits, your upfront implementation costs and the trainings and the transfers and all of that far outweigh any savings. But we're completely happy with this product. What was, what was last year's contract? It was about a 2% difference. Their escalator with PowerSchool is anywhere from a 2 to a 3% escalator. We know that going in, especially on our multi-year contracts, as we've talked this evening. Um, that's about a typical escalator, anywhere from 2 couple, to 5%. A couple thousand dollars from last year. Yeah, so, yeah, a couple hundred dollars. A couple thousand. Yeah. And this is the system that meets the audit needs as far as server backup and the emergency preparedness. Yes, we're, yes, we've, we've obtained, um, I can't, life of me can remember what the, um, it, the, the form is required, but our auditors do require that any of our systems that are hosted have this particular backup where they have offsite disaster recovery and things like that. Um, this also includes all of our customer support, all of our, you know, training that we might need, um, on an ongoing basis. If we have a problem, you know, something we can't solve, that's all included here. But as far as their disaster recovery, or if we need to do a backup or a restore because we had a system failure, they have all those redundancies in their systems. Um, and we don't have to rely on them on, on our systems to have them. Did we have an increase in our, our um, enrollment last year? The only reason why I ask this is because and it was brought to my attention by Mrs. Morissette under the supplemental terms and conditions, the enrollment, if the enrollment increases, we get charged an extra 5% um, for the licenses. So, the, so is that where the 5% came from? No, that's, well, this, this is a standard power school license product and service agreement. So it probably migrated from the SIS because okay. obviously if you have more students, there's the cost there. We're pretty much set because our costs are not driven by um, small changes in, in students. If we were to double, obviously the cost would go up, but our enrollment shifts on the student side right. are not really affecting us on the business side. So they wouldn't be connected then, right? There's yeah, the, the, I think the, the, the terminology is an API where they, where they have an interface that talks between the two. But this is within the last year that PowerSchool has bought out oh, okay. SunGuard. So it could be a year or two, but that's what we're hopeful for, that as we move these products forward, that they all talk to each other. And I see it's an Oracle product. Yeah, well, the, the underlying basis is an Oracle database, yes. And uh, all of our systems are Oracle-based? I'd have to ask Mr. Combs about that, but I okay. would imagine 
um, that or Microsoft SQL Server. I'm not really sure. I don't uh, want to get into the technology world. Uh, that's the world. first time I've seen Oracle mentioned yeah. in any of our. A lot of databases are Oracle. There's PowerSchool uses Oracle, so Oracle's the underlying. Okay. It sits on top of that. Yeah, they're coming. As if you had a Microsoft Access program and you called it. I got rid of Oracle. To. That's the reason why yep. I'm asking. You know that we're using it here. Okay. I'm good. good. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, I need a motion to approve the FY 2020 subscription annual fee for PowerSchool eFinance Plus in the amount of $82,131.36 coming out of the FY 2020 operating budget. So moved. Second. And then a motion is second. Mrs. Wright, a vote. Your name is called, Captain Kelly. Yes. Ms. Harper. Yes. Ms. Morissette. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. I have four of the affirmative motion to Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of you on the contracts. The next one is the uh, Elementary Social Studies textbook series approval. Is there, you were talking about that, at Dr. King? Certainly, um, let me get back to it. I was looking for the term that Mr. Okay. Mr. was, that was escaping him. And we are looking at final approval of this. That's um, correct. And we have had that out on the street. We've had it out for two um, rounds of viewing, and we're requesting approval. We've not gotten any comments um, for this um, series. How's the staff like it? Well, they selected it. So that, <laughs> so, but yeah. I mean, but it's. It was their choice. So they reviewed certain, you know, several different options, and, and this was the one that they selected. As you know, we put it out for public comment and viewing, um, and we've gotten no, no response back. So okay. we're ready to request approval. Danny, anybody have any questions on that? I don't. All right. So I need a motion to approve the purchase of Pearson My World Interactive, which is a comprehensive digital and text-based resource for grades of K to five. It's a social studies textbook series. The contract period is August 2019 to June 2020 in the amount of $232,302.96. Coming from? Oh, I'm sorry, coming coming out of the capital tech, capital budget. Capital textbook where, budget. Where we have the textbook. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So moved. Second. All in favor, Mrs. Wright. Members, please respond when your name is called. Captain Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Morissette? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I have four affirmative motion carries. Okay. Dr. King, I see it says like on taxes. We don't pay sales tax on this stuff, do we? No. No. Okay. No. The state's not that rude. No, we do not pay sales tax on anything. Gotcha. I don't even pay sales tax on employee reimbursement, so no, we don't pay sales tax. We don't pay sales tax on anything we purchase. Okay, and, and I need a motion to approve the HR report as presented in closed session. So moved. Second. All in favor, Mrs. Wright. Well, members, again, please respond when your name is called. Captain Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Morissette? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I have formed the affirmative motion carried. The HR report is approved. Next item is the transportation report. Good evening, board members. Dr. Kane again. Um, I'm seeking approval tonight for Barbara Pritchett to purchase um, a used bus for the 2019-20 school year. Um, this will be replacing, uh, unfortunately, Mr. Uh, Earl Wilmer Sr. passed away um, recently, and I believe the family doesn't have any interest in continuing with the transportation. Um, so that allows one contract to be open, um, depending uh, on the situation here, like I said, Ms. Pritchett would like to purchase a bus, a used bus. So the PVA, it is not going to be, you know, at the regular rate. It will be whatever year that bus is. Okay. Okay. Is that and, because, I mean, it's not about our business because she might be purchasing Mr. Wilmer's bus or? I don't, I, I don't want to get into that. I, I okay. don't think so. Yeah. But you, you can buy used buses? Yes, sir. You can buy a used bus. It has to be inspected and it has to meet the, uh, you know, the Maryland Department of uh, Motor Vehicles, all their guidelines. And our PVA, if it's a eight year old bus has only got four years left, it's, it's prorated. Oh, yeah, it's that gonna be at that PVA. So say the bus is uh, a 2012. Okay. Whatever that year is, it's gonna come from 2012. Only it will not be the length the, of time it runs out. Yes, sir, that's correct. Um, 
The next bus is for Barbara Wallace to purchase a new bus. Um, the four LLCs are allowed to have six spares and those spares do not get a PVA. It is $500 a month for to have the spare bus. And basically with the amount of, um, with the buses being able to go to 15 years now, they are seeing buses break down. So basically having the spare bus enables another contractor to rent that bus from them. So seeking approval for um, Ms. Pritchett and for also Ms. Wallace. So Ms. Wallace is um, buying a new bus with a new PVA. That will be with a new PVA. And, and so that means her current bus is- Her current bus 50, will not get a PVA. It will only get $500 a month. It has 15 years, is that what, or it can't? It can't, I mean, it can't be a spare and have 15 years. It, you're only allowed, we're looking for 12 to 15 years. 15 years. What is hers at? The state of Maryland. Hers is uh, an 09, so it's 10, it'll be going 11 years. Okay. Which does qualify it for being a spare. Okay. So. Spares to also can go up to 15, right? Yep, that's okay. correct. But 12 is the ideal it, time. It, as you remember, a few years ago, the state moved it up to, well, the county got the state to approve that up to 15. 15. Okay. Any questions on the transportation? Looking at a motion to approve um, Barbara Pritchard to purchase a used bus and Barbara Wallace a new bus and her old bus of number 10609 will be used as a spare. So moved. Second. Okay, a motion and a second. Mrs. Wright. Will Mr. Hughes respond to what your name is called? Captain Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Woodset? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I have four in the affirmative. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next items are the policies for approval. Um, these have been through the process. They've been through the process. So they've gone through two reads or so requesting approval for behavior threat assessment policy 508 and the high school grading policy 629. Regulations accompany both of those. And any comments received? There were no comments. Okay, does anyone have any questions on these policies? So I need a motion to approve the behavior threat assessment policy number 508 with the associated regulation 508.1 and the high school grading policy number 629 with the associated regulation 629.1. So moved. Second. A motion and a second, Mrs. Wright. Board members, again, please respond to what your name is called. Captain Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Forsett? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I have four in the affirmative. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the policy committee, too, for Absolutely. putting all this work into it. Um, and the last uh, approval item, action item, is the school board, Board of Ed's uh, handbook. We put a lot of work into this, and this is the uh, vote for the approval of the amendments we've made to the BOE handbook. So I need a motion to approve the amendments to the Board of Education handbook. Are we, I'm par pardon me for clarification. We get four votes, it goes. Thank you, thank you. That's what I wanted to know. So do I have a motion to approve that? Uh, so moved. Second. Okay. A motion is second to approve the amendments to the school board handbook. All in favor? M Mrs. Wright? Board members, please respond what your name is called. Captain Kelly? Yes. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Wissett? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Uh, I have one affirmative motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take a 10 minute break. Um, come back at 8 o'clock, then we can finish up. <laughs> Welcome back. Next item on our agenda is the policies put out for second read. One is a complaint policy, and another is student data governance and privacy. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Information items? Transfer notice. I'm sorry, Mr. Pender. Thank you, Captain Kelly. Uh, before you is just the, the standard, um, as we had talked about the last couple of months, uh, the standard transfer notice, which is in category transfers, does not require your approval, does not require county council approval. And for the month of June, um, as we're closing out the year, we made a $6,000 change from uh, the object of temporary wages to custodial supplies uh, to finish out the supplies in the uniform budgets with an anticipated expenditures. Okay. Does anyone have any questions on that transfer notice? 
I do have one question on how are we on the closeout? I mean, how did that? So, so we're out? wrapping up now and we'll have some information for you later in the year, but we always use June as the cleanup because a lot of invoices and everything come at the end. We try to clean up all the purchase orders and everything like that. It's a very tight year, but I think we'll be okay. So we can report that at the business meeting beginning yes. of yes. August. Yes. Okay. Not August, probably October, right? And then August, as so, far as the closeout. So, of this so year. we we use the month of July to close out, and then we work with our auditors, and then your official statements will be done on September 30th, and we generally have the auditors, the external auditors, and then of course they'll be new this year, as as you approve that contract. Um, they'll probably come in October uh, if we can make the schedule, or November to do a presentation on the financial statements. Right, but, you but as far as give an, update us an update as to where we are, right, yes, you will receive that as well. At the end of June. Okay. Yes. I mean, in August. All right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, policies for second read Compli complaint policy and student data governance and privacy policy. Do we receive any comments yet? We have not received any comments of this afternoon. Am I correct? Ms. Mm -hmm. So we've not received any po um, comments, but we need to put this out for a second read. Okay. So we will put this out for a second read. We don't need a motion about that. Everybody agree to that? Okay. I'd just like to recognize uh, Mr. Watkins, who is still here with us in case there are any questions. Um, he has been working with multiple districts in ensuring that we have an appropriate student data governance um, and privacy policy, and it has been an extraordinary amount of work. He has a team that's been working. Um, he just informed me that we had a, a few um, high school uh, teachers, and they just approved over 200 um, uh, applications and um, tools for students to use. It has been a phenomenal amount of work, and I'd just like to recognize his leadership and thank all of those who have been involved in uh, getting this work done. Wow. Thank you, Mr. Thank Watkins. You. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. You. Awesome. And to everybody. Okay, community participation. Do we have anybody else on the list? No, ma'am. Okay. So future meetings and events. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Doc, Doc, it's, it's not a public participation, but just uh, in recognizing some folks, I, I did want to recognize um, QAC TV who uh, was very instrumental in assisting us with getting our new technology mm -hmm. that we have in our boardroom uh, today. So we want to make sure that we acknowledge and thank them for that work. And also for the leadership of Mr. Pender and Ms. Pullen, who have overseen the, um, the work that's been done in this boardroom from the new carpet to the paint on the walls to the monitors so that we have better viewing for all of our participants and as it's filmed. So it's just made a lot of things better for us. So we're working our way and uh, just like to recognize them and thank them for their leadership. You're welcome. If you wouldn't mind, Dr. Kane, I'd like to take this opportunity to, at the end of the school year and now the start of a new one, to thank all of our sponsors, all of our corporate sponsors, people, members of the community that have supported QACPS monetarily, you know, spiritually, um, and, and anyway, we truly appreciate it. We don't say it enough during the course of the year. Uh, I'm going to get better at that. Um, but thank the, all of them. We have had so many wonderful people that are, that are supporting us to help us support our students, and, and I would like to, to thank them. Absolutely, and we're going to be having some uh, lunches scheduled with some of our donors and supporters for the Teacher of the Year. So Ms. Wright is working on that. We'll, I'll be having lunch with them, several of them. So thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, for future meetings, we have a... Um, School board work session next Wednesday, and potentially the 24th, another one that's still tentative. August 7th is our school board meeting, our monthly meeting, and then we will have a mid-month meeting um, on the 21st of August. Our normal, oh. we're going trying to get back to our normal two meetings a month. The work schedule next week will be from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m.? Yes. We have a tentative one on the 24th. Right. And, that and we'll would, discuss that at the next one. We'll, we'll decide whether we need that or not after the 17th. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else? No. So I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Mrs. Wright? Board members, please respond once I call your name. Kathy Kelly? Yes. 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 Board Smith? Yes. Board Affirmative. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Meetings adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.